week's lesson, we'll learn the partial goodwill method under I first. Let's see how this works with an example. Start with the question. Under IFRS, using the partial goodwill method, how much is goodwill? They're asking for goodwill under the partial goodwill method used for IFRS. Make a note on the top of your board. Let's read the rest of the prompt. Palmco acquired 80% of Spring Inc's outstanding common stock for $5 million. The purchase price included $400,000 to reimburse the former shareholders of Spring for legal fees incurred to complete the acquisition. Palm also agreed to pay Spring an additional $1.5 million if Spring generates $5 million in net earnings during the first two years after the acquisition. At the acquisition date, the fair value of the contingent consideration was $600,000. Under IFRS, using the partial goodwill method, how much is goodwill? And then they give us a list of acquisition items. Looks like PPE, in-process research and development, legal fees. These look like items we may need in our calculations. Let's start this question the way we've started our other acquisition questions, with the three items we need for our calculations. Book value at the bottom, fair value in the middle, purchase price at the top. The difference between book value and fair value we mark to market. The difference between fair value and the purchase price is goodwill. Or if it's a negative number, it's a bargain purchase gain. This is where we get our definition for goodwill. The 100% purchase price over the 100% fair value. That's the rule for US GAAP. And that's why it's called the full goodwill method because goodwill is calculated on 100% regardless of the percentage purchase. Meaning the parent can buy 51% of the subsidiary and the calculations are still based on 100%. On the other hand, under the partial goodwill method, note, we calculate goodwill only for the parent's percentage. So the percentages in the calculations are different. But under both methods, goodwill is still based on the difference between the purchase price and the fair value. Let's do the US GAAP calculation first. This is just the way we've been doing it all along. Let's plug in our numbers. How much is fair value? Skimming through the prompt, it looks like the numbers we need for fair value are in this handy dandy table that they give us. The table gives us two columns. The first one is for carry value and the second one is for fair value. Which one do we care about? Fair value. Remember, we're trying to calculate the fair value of the subsidiary. That's the fair value of the subsidiary's assets less the fair value of the subsidiary's liabilities. First, PPE. Does this go into our fair value calculation? Yes, it does. It's the fair value of an asset. Next, in process research and development. Does this go into our fair value calculation? Yes, it does. Remember, for in-process research and development, in a business acquisition, we record it as an asset at the acquisition date fair value. Next, legal fees, 400,000. How do we treat legal fees in a business combination? These are direct expenses incurred in the acquisition, and direct expenses in a business combination are expenses incurred. They are not an asset or a liability of the subsidiary. So these do not get included in fair value. Next, bonds payable. Do we include this in fair value? Yes, we do. It is a liability of spring. Next, estimated post-acquisition restructuring cost. That post is giving us a clue. We do not include this in fair value. It is not part of the business combination. It's not part of acquiring a controlling interest in the sub. It's post-acquisition. So we record these costs later, separate from the acquisition at hand. Last, contingent consideration. The prompt says that Palm agreed to pay an additional $1.5 million if Spring makes $5 million in the next two years. First, this means that Palm may have to pay more in the future. If you have to pay more in the future, that's a liability. The acquisition date fair value is $600,000. That means that today, on the acquisition date, we don't record the full $1.5 million. We record the acquisition date, fair value, 600000 Remember, this goes to two places. First to the purchase price, it's part of what Palm is paying to acquire Spring. And second, to Palm's balance sheet as a contingent liability. It's contingent based on Spring meeting certain earnings targets. But Palm is the one that may have to pay more in the future. So does this get included in the fair value calculation for Spring's assets and liabilities? No, it only goes to Palm. Let's add it all up. 4.2 million plus 1,320,000 minus 450,000 equals 5,070,000 fair value. 
Now let's do the purchase price. The prompt tells us Palm paid $5 million, but it also tells us that embedded in that purchase price are $400,000 for legal fees. Remember, those are direct expenses in the business combination and they get expensed as incurred. So they do not get included in our purchase price. We gotta take it out. Are we done with the purchase price? Let's check the prompt just to make sure. Oh yeah, the contingent liability. Remember, it goes to two places. First, to the purchase price. It's money Palm may have to pay in the future to acquire the sub. Let's calculate 5 million minus 400,000 plus 600,000 equals 5.2 million, the purchase price. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, wait, 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 wait a minute. The fair value is at 100%, but the purchase price is at 80%. Let's make two separate columns. Remember, under US GAAP, we need the 100% purchase price. Do they give us anything to use to get to 100%? No, then we use what we have, and what we have is the 80% purchase price. So we take the 5.2 million and we divide by 80%. That gives us 6.5 million. Now we have the 100% purchase price and the 100% fair value. We can calculate goodwill. 6.5 million minus 5,070,000 equals 1,430,000 goodwill. That's under the full goodwill method. Now let's do the partial goodwill method, which is only allowed under IFRS. Remember what we said earlier, under the partial goodwill method, we calculate goodwill only for the parent's percentage. Here, Palm's percentage is 80%. We have the purchase price at 80%. Now we just need the fair value at 80%. How do we do that? Take the 100% fair value, 5,070,000, and multiply it by 80% which equals 4,056,000. Now we have the numbers we need to compute goodwill. The 80% purchase price, 5.2 million, less the 80% fair value, 4,056,000, equals 1,144,000 partial goodwill. Let's take a step back here and look at what we've done. On the US GAAP side, the goodwill calculation is based on 100%. Whereas for the partial goodwill method, we compute goodwill based on the parent's percentage. And note, for US GAAP, we only use the full goodwill method. Under IFRS, you can use either the full or partial goodwill methods. Just to summarize, under US GAAP, we use the full goodwill method, which computes goodwill at 100%. Under IFRS, you can use either the full or partial goodwill methods. And remember, the partial goodwill method is calculated based on parents' percentage. That's it for the substantive part of business combinations and consolidations! You are hereby another step closer to passing. Go cross that off your checklist. If you have any questions or comments, or you want to let me